Join Twins K.N. Olu Taiwu, featured authors and speakers, receive keys that will unlock the door to your discovery of purpose. This is your date with destiny. Welcome to the Vision Guided Life. We are excited to come to you and uh, have another time to meet together and discuss what God is doing in our, our day. Kay, what do you have to say about today's message? I am so excited for this time that we have again to share what God has put within our hearts. Um, it's a time that is very trying for everyone within the United States and around the globe. But uh, we want everyone to be encouraged that God has given us a mission that will be fulfilled if we link ourselves up to, up to him and he will show us the way that we ought to go. Exactly. And it's very important, especially in a time like this, that every one of us, that we know who we are in Jesus Christ. Yes. Because what we are seeing today is that many people are becoming distracted by what is going around. There's a lot of noise going around us. Would you say it's okay? I absolutely agree with that. There's a lot going on and there are a lot of mixed messages that we're hearing and that mixed message impacts how we see life and whether we live in faith or we live in fear. Fear is one of the most, uh, I would say, widespread uh, things affecting people today that really literally ch it can shift and change the course of their lives. And so that cannot be overstated. It, it, we have to... Uh, uh, be able to identify fear when it shows itself and make sure we are anchored in God's word in our lives. Absolutely. You need, need to be anchored on God's word because if we're not anchored on God's word, then we're going to be shifting with the times. True. We're going to be shifting and we're going to become people who are moved by more of emotion. True. The word of God, the Bible says that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, by the rhema of God. So that's what we live by. We need to be in tune with his word because we're not in tune with his word. We'll be in tune with the voices around us. We've taught this over and over again in our ministry. In our book, Uncovering the Hidden Stranger Within, is based upon this premise that there are four voices that testify about us on this planet. Number one, the voice of God. Two, the voice of Satan. Three, the voice of man or men around us. And number four, the voice of self. Now the caveat is here. The voice that you and I embrace becomes our own. Yes. So the question is, in the midst of all the noise, what voice are you embracing? Because True. that voice becomes your reality. True. If you embrace the voice of confusion, if you embrace the voice of violence, if you embrace the voice of anger, that's what you become, ultimately. True. What do you have to say about that, Kay? I think that's so true. And that is, the, those four voices pretty much summarize our existence and how we live our lives today. Um, for example, <laughs> something that's going on in society today where during this whole COVID crisis, some people are categorized as essential or non-essential. Now, that, the word choice, someone actually came up with that term. I, I actually spoke to someone who uh, has some kind of background in the military, and he says those are the terms they use in the military. But when you translate or transfer those concepts into a secular world at large, and you use terms non-essential and essential, you sort of, people attach some kind of value or importance to it. So those people that are considered essential, keeping uh, things going, hospital workers, healthcare workers, uh, firefighters, police officers, essential. But then you have a category that's like, well, you're optional, <laughs> you know, <laughs> take a rest, stay at home, we don't need you. But, Every human being in the kingdom of God is, is essential. essential. Absolutely. Worker. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely essential workers. First Corinthians 12, 27 bears that out. 
for you are the body of Christ and members in particular. In the Amplified Bible says, you are the body of Christ collectively, individually, members of it, each part severally and distinct, each with his own place and function. So we all have a vital part to play. God doesn't call one part essential or non-essential. We're all essential. Well, of course, we know that when in society, when they, those terms are used, they're pretty much uh, saying that there's certain services that cannot be interrupted because they may be a matter of life and death. So we do understand that. But we want to bring it back to every person watching, whether you fall into the category of what society calls essential or non-essential worker, maybe you're at home right now because you've been categorized as non-essential. You are very essential. Absolutely. And what you do with your time, what you do daily determines what you become permanently. True. So you need to begin to use the opportunity to invest in who God has, has made you, who has he designed you to be. So we said this before at the beginning, there are four voices. I want to repeat that and say, I'm going to add another aspect to that. What I, what I said, there are four voices that testify about us on this planet. Number one, the voice of God. Number two, the voice of Satan. Three, the voice of self. And four, the voice of man around us, men around us. This is very crucial because even though I mentioned that God testifies about us, the effect of the testimony of God is directly proportional to our ability to embrace it. True. In other words, God has spoken a lot of things concerning us, but if we embrace the voices outside of God's influence, those voices become our reality. I'm, I'm reminded of Judges chapter 6 with Gideon. Remember Gideon had this encounter yeah. where the angel of the Lord comes to him and the first message he gives to, to Gideon is, the Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. And uh, Gideon goes on a series of, of all kinds of excuses as to why that word could not be. But you notice that the angel never interrupted the message, kept going. It was, it was like the angel was saying, uh, Gideon, have you finished all your, your ranting? Let's go back to the message. Go in this your might. So it's not the circumstances that determine our reality. It's what we embrace. If we embrace the voice of God, God himself can take us to a place of prominence to do his will. And every part, several and distinct, as 1 Corinthians 12, 27 states, we all have our place. It's true. Very true. And uh, it's very... It's very it's kind of a, a challenge for people today to see that they cannot afford to abandon the voice of God. And it's, it's kind of subtle because when we talked about uh, thermo thermometer and thermostat last time, when people are ruled by their emotions, the voice that is more appealing to them is the voice that tells them that justifies and reinforces how they feel, not necessarily what they should be doing about the circumstances, but how they feel. We recently had an encounter with a, a, a friend, a friend for decades, who um, pretty much was getting caught up with what, with what is going on. And it began to look like he was uh, more attuned with the social issues. And it kind of defined his approach on what should ordinarily be simple uh, uh, biblical values. The biblical values were being eclipsed by what was going on in society. So we had very, you know, de deliberate exchanges to show that, no, we have to stay in tune with what God said. And it, it uh, got really heated. And uh, we didn't hear from this brother in a while. So I reached out to him and said, how are things going? And his response was that he, it, he has, he's doing a reset. He's doing a reset that the, his time away wasn't that he maintained his position that caused that back and forth, but now he was doing a reset because he saw that he was misaligned, you know, with God's agenda for his life. So he, his reset was really a recalibration to his biblical worldview. So he got sidetracked. Emotional, emotional sidetracked. So he got uh, sidetracked. 
with the voices outside. That you're just Absolutely. connecting exactly what I was talking about. He got caught up with what was going on all, all around him, that the voice of God was put in the, back, in the background. The dominant voice became the societal exchanges going on. And he got sucked into that. It's very subtle. Many times you don't know when you're being pulled into emotional tangents in which uh, you can become very easily, you can very easily go off track on your, on your primary assignment and the world will help you do that. Yes. So we had to go back and be, in fact, I want to read this scripture, very important scripture. And that's what we hinge uh, our lives upon because the church is built upon this. Matthew chapter 16. I'm going to read verses 13 through 18. It says, when Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, who do men say that I, the son of man am? Verse 14 says, so they said, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, and the fourth category, or one of the prophets. Verse 15, he said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Look at Jesus' response in verse 17. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. Verse 18. And I also say to you that you are the Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Now, this is the truth that we need to, to, to key on. The rock upon which Jesus builds his church is the revelation of who he is. Yes. And once you displace the revelation of who Jesus is, you become vulnerable to every force that is out there. Notice he said, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of Hades or hell will not prevail against it. Now, he is the builder of the church. Yes. So if we try to build what he is not building, and if we're building upon another foundation that is not Jesus Christ, that foundation is sure to crumble. He's I want to hear what you have to say about that's, that. That's very powerful. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what our opinions are, how we feel. <laughs> what does the Christ, who is the founder of the church, think on the matter? And once we, 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 once we fail uh, to see that and connect that, the dots, and that's where we get into problems, we get sidetracked. And the thing about voices is that the obvious becomes obscure. What everyone should agree upon suddenly becomes controversial. Uh, there's a case of this actor, uh, Terry Crews, recently he made a statement. I'm oh, going to yeah. read it. And I, I, when I read this statement, I want you to think about it. <laughs> At a different time in our society, everyone who is a believer will find this statement universally acceptable, but not now for some reason. I'm going to read the statement and tell me what you think about this. He says, if you are a child of God, you are my brother and sister. I have a family of every race, creed, and ideology. We must ensure Black Lives Matter doesn't morph into Black Lives Better. It was black supremacy. Mm. And this is what I want to really, really reiterate to you uh, and, and explain. My thing was, I, what I said was defeating white supremacy without white people could create black supremacy. It's, and this is the deal. In 1994, in Rwanda, there was a genocide, and it was all black people. Mm -hmm. And there was one sector that viewed themselves as over the, the other. Whole, a the million people yeah. died. Yes. And I'm tra and you know I'm told I was told it can't happen in America. And I'm here to tell you that's the first mistake. But this is a spiritual problem. Right. Right. 
under normal circumstances, truth is truth. And I heard years ago that uh, all form of truth is confrontational because you won't change if you're not confronted by the truth. If the truth is obscure to you and you dilute it, it won't have any lasting impact. So you have to be faced with the truth to make the necessary change. Very important, very crucial, very vital. So the point of the matter is, if I say universally that every person that uh, is a child of God, we have a commonality in Christ, that should not be controversial. At all. Under At all. normal circumstances. But it is in today's uh, uh, age. And now what we have is we have different camps of people. We have people that are on one side of the issue and on the other side. And I think we, it's okay to have different perspectives on an issue, but universally it has to be governed by what does the word of God say on the issue. So at a, our point of disagreement should end where the Bible has spoken, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. And it's interesting you mentioned Terry Crews. I just saw recently, I think he celebrated either the, his 30th wedding anniversary. And because of some of the stances he has taken, even a celebration of his... Uh, wedding anniversary, somebody was, I mean, people were giving all kinds of very terrible uh, comments because of the stand that he took. What is controversial in what he said in the context of scripture? No, nothing there at all. But in today's nothing. society, that would set somebody off. Because it's a, it's a mob rule that we're dealing with today. The mob rule means that you're either with us or you're in the way and if you're in the way we run you over that's the mob rule so it's more convenient to go with the herd than to take a stand on what you believe and i don't think his stand is antagonistic to movements that are going on but he's simply saying wait a minute let's not lose our identity in christ for an agenda that may we may not even know where it's heading we see where it is, but we don't know where it's headed. So before you get on the train, make sure you know that you are grounded by certain principles, and those principles should be in the Word of God. Yes, they That's should. It. They should. And if they're not grounded in the Word of God, tell me what they're grounded on. Yes. Tell yes. me what they're grounded on, because if it's grounded mm -hmm. on emotions, those who built their house upon the sand, with a matter of time when the storm comes, those, found, those houses are going to crumble because they're not built upon the rock. True. And there's no other foundation that can be laid other than what that which has already been laid, which is Christ Jesus. He's the head of, of the corners. He's a head cornerstone. So if we're not built upon the word of God, we say that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. If we are building our lives based on what is happening today in society, based on a movement. So what happens when that movement stops? Do we embrace the next wind of doctrine, next movement, or are we based upon the foundations of our faith? Because we have to put in mind that if anything that we should learn in what all that's going on is that everything that can be shaken will be shaken. Any institution, all the lockdown that we've seen, all the major institutions came to a halt globally. All man-made institutions have come to a halt globally. Are you hear what I'm feel, saying? Yes, it almost feels like uh, we're, we're, we're obviously in unprecedented times, but it almost feels like this is a test run wow. for the church wow. Wow. categorized as non-essential. Wow, you're going somewhere because this very day, today, this, uh, um, this morning, I got a, a tweet in which the person said, let's pray for John MacArthur. And why did they make that statement? Interesting, because I want to read an excerpt. John MacArthur uh, is saying that the church has been put into a corner by saying they cannot reopen. And he made a statement. I want to read this excerpt. I'm glad you... 
I'll give you uh, time to respond, but this is what he said. This is an excerpt. It's a very long uh, statement on his website. It says, as pastors and elders, we cannot hand over to earthly authorities any pri privilege or power that belongs solely to Christ as head of his church. Pastors and elders are the ones to whom Christ has given the duty and the right to exercise his spiritual authority in the church. 1 Peter 5, 1 to 4, Hebrews 13, 7 and 17. And scripture alone defines how and whom they are to serve. 1 Corinthians 4, 1 to 4. They have no duty to follow orders from a civil government attempting to regulate the worship or governance of the church. In fact, pastors who cede their Christ-delegated authority in the church to a civil ruler have abdicated their responsibility before their Lord and violated the God-ordained spheres of authority as much as a secular official who illegitimately imposes his authority upon the church. And this is what he concludes. Our church's doctrinal statement has included this paragraph for more than 40 years. Interesting. So what do you have to say about that? Yeah, I, I made the statement that uh, uh, earlier about essential and non-essential. <laughs> and uh, what you're seeing by them closing churches, there is a test run that churches are not essential. And when things are not essential, you can turn them on with, at your own pleasing and turn them off as well. That, that so awesome. that's what we're beginning to see. Mm -hmm. And uh, so far, because of the nature of this uh, virus, people didn't know what to do at first. And now we know quite a lot about it. And the irony of it is there are cast casinos that are open. There are bars that are open. So tell me why the church is not considered essential, but a drinking or gambling institution is allowed freedom to open up. You explain that to me. I the very life-giving institution called the church, the church has an impact spiritually, emotionally, and physically on the well-being of a person, on a family, on society. You close it down and you constrain what inf influence and impact they can have. And then on the other side, you see that the suicide rate has gone up. The suicide hotlines, they said they're seeing uh, call-ins like they've never seen before, literally. And you see children, so, too, being abused. That, that's, has children being abused, escalated. things like that being underreported because people are, you know, they can't speak to someone outside the home. So the impact on society, we have not really begun to really see the long uh, damaging impact uh, effect of this whole closed down shutdown, but particularly the church is an essential, absolutely part essential of God's kingdom agenda and to impact society for the good. Yes, and I, I definitely see there's going to be a fallout from uh, John MacArthur's stance here. That's why that whole tweet said, "Pray for him." There's going to be a backlash because right. what they have. You, you just put it in a very uh, eloquent way. It's, it's like a test run because this becomes the beginning of other uh, means of control, trying to control the church. If you yeah. can shut it down, if you can say indefinitely you're not to open, then you can, you, if the church gives into that, that can become a, lo a, a long-term strategy to silence the voice of the church. It's so true. we need to be on alert spiritually. The church needs to wake up, wake up. You, wake all of you who are sleeping, wake up. Wake up, wake up. Following cause, if there's any cause you should follow right now, is the cause of the, the battle cry of the kingdom of God. True. And I think we're definitely going to have to uh, come back and revisit uh, uh, this message because Luke said we've run out of time. I want to thank you for tuning into the Vision Guided Life. Remember this, that transformation, transformation takes place, place through identification, identification with, with Christ. Christ. God, God bless, bless you. you. We want to thank all our partners for your prayers and financial support. We also want to extend this invitation to those of you who have been watching us for weeks, months, and even years and have been blessed 
by this ministry. Now you have an opportunity to partner with us by giving. We have two simple ways. First, you can go to our website, visionforlifeministries.org, and click on the Donate button on the home page. Even simpler than that, you can simply text GIVE to 650-399-9115. Additionally, I'm so excited to let you know that a great opportunity has opened to us to broadcast our program in the Middle East in the translated language of Farsi that will reach the people that we are yet to reach and thereby expand our ministry's impact around the world. We are very, very excited by this opportunity. Imagine the people that can be reached who have never heard the gospel before. So partner with us today. Text GIVE to 650-399-9115 or visit visionforlifeministries.org and donate today. God bless you. God bless you. Many continue to be locked in a fog of confusion. God calls out a remnant. Arise, shine, your light has come. You are an agent of change. Yes, you are. You have been equipped with tools to fulfill your God-given assignment. What you need is illumination. Illumination is a personal revelation of an already existing truth. Your God-given marching orders empower you to be successful in effecting change in your world. Agents of change are not preoccupied with darkness. They are preoccupied with being the light. Don't be an expert at what you are against and an amateur at what you are for. The light of God is the catalyst for transformation. It is time to arise, shine, because your light has come. For a gift of $25 or more, call 1-844-334-2197 or visit visionforlifeministries.org right now to order.